Hey everyone, Derek again from the Mock Family Resource Center in Fitchburg. Today I'm going to do a video on fishing regulations. I've put out a few videos on how to fish, but I haven't gone over any of the regulations and stuff, um, which is supremely important. So this video will just be some basics. Um, you can go to mass.gov and search for fishing regulations for some more in-depth stuff. But in this video, I'm just going to cover the basics that everyone needs to know in order to fish and fish legally. It's super important to follow these things um, because if you don't, you could get in trouble and it can impact whether or not you can fish in the future. So that's something to be mindful of. All right, the first thing you're going to want to focus on is whether or not you need a license and getting that license. Um, so fishing licenses are legally required in the state of Massachusetts and the surrounding states. So if you're gonna fish out of state in like New Hampshire or Connecticut or something, make sure you're looking up their regulations. The regulations I'm going over today are just for Massachusetts. Um, and the prices for out of state licenses usually aren't too crazy. Um, they're pretty reasonable. So make sure you're looking up the different regulations in different states if you're going to be going out of state um, but Massachusetts you need one if you're over the age of 17 so once you hit 17 you need to go buy yourself a fishing license it's usually around $30 um, there's some additional fees there it's not too too bad um, anyone ages 15 to 17 you need a license but it's free you don't have to pay for it so for those couple of years you just go online go to Walmart wherever you purchase a license and it's free so you don't have to worry about it um, anyone 15 and younger you don't need a license you can just fish um, usually you need to be able to use the rod and reel on your own so they say anyone under 15, but it's usually ages like 3 to 15 because a 3-year-old can learn how to cast and reel in a fishing line. So anyone younger than 3 usually won't be considered an angler because they can't use the fishing rod themselves. Um, so I'll go over that again. Anyone 15 and under, you can fish without a license. Anyone ages 15 to 17, you need a license, but it's free. Anyone older than 17, you need to get a license, um, and it's usually around $30. Anyone over the age of 70 can fish for free as well, um, and there's no cost there, but you need to get a license. Um, it's the same as being 15 to 17. It's free, but you need to go get one. Um, you can get them, like I said, at Walmart, Cabela's, Dick's Sporting Goods might sell them, or right online at mass.gov. Um, some people think that licenses are ridiculous, that you shouldn't have to pay to fish on water that's free for everyone to use. Um, and I understand that argument, but where I'm coming from is someone who's fished their whole life and who hunts and who enjoys um, the conservation aspect of the outdoors. All the money that you spend on your licenses and your tags for hunting and fishing goes right back into managing the wildlife and managing the areas that we hunt and fish on. So you're not just paying for the legality of being able to fish or hunt, you're paying for conservation. You're paying for trails to be managed. Um, you're paying for water to make sure that the water that you're fishing in and swimming in is safe to be in. Um, you're paying for people to take numbers on fish populations, on deer populations, and all other wildlife populations. And if you enjoy fishing for trout, a lot of the trout in these waters are stocked from farms. Um, so we need to pay for them to be able to keep those stocking programs going so we can keep fishing for those trout that we'd like to catch. Um, so licenses might seem like a pain, but it's going back into being able to enjoy the outdoors. So it's a small price to pay for keeping our hobbies and our um, lakes, streams, trails, and things like that um, available and um, safe to use and um, making sure that the populations aren't getting out of control. Um, so it's very important. 
Um, with that said, the license prices, um, they're proposing a bill to the state to raise license prices. Um, so if that's something you're interested in, whether you think they should be raised or whether you think we should keep the prices down, um, you can research that. You can look up what the proposed bill is and then contact the state or whoever if you want to you know, keep the license prices where they're at or make sure that they're not going to charge us too much to continue to recreate and enjoy the outdoors. Um, that won't happen for another couple of years, I don't think, um, but it's still good to make sure you're educated on it and, and know what's going to be happening. Um, but make sure you get your license. If you're caught without a license, um, it could mean fines. It could mean a suspension of being able to fish. Um, sometimes if you're younger um, or even if you're upfront and honest with them, if you don't have a license, um, if you, you know, environmental police or fishing game um, are asking for a license and you don't have one, be honest with them. Sometimes they'll just give you a warning, tell you to go out and get one, um, and they'll just have you pack up for the day, and that'll be the end of it. Um, if you do it multiple times, um, they're likely to give you some fines and take your rights to fish away. Um, so make sure you have one. Um, make sure if you do bump into an EPO, if they are asking for your licenses, um, be respectful to them. Don't give them a hard time. Um, I've dealt with them quite a few times when they've asked for my license. Um, they're not looking to give anyone a hard time. They don't want to bust anyone or hand out any fines, really. They just want to make sure people are enjoying the outdoors and doing it legally in the right way. Um, so like I said, just be honest with them, um, and they'll usually be pretty kind to you. Um, also, they're great sources of information. They know the areas, they know the bodies of water, ask them for tips, ask them for information. If you're looking for a new place to fish, if you want to know where's the best place on a certain lake to catch certain fish, you can ask them those questions and uh, most of them will be able to help you out. Um, so they're good people. Um, don't give them a hard time if they're asking you for a license. Just be upfront and honest with them. If you don't have one, if you do have one, just show it to them and they're usually uh, pretty quick about getting you back to fishing. In mass, you don't need to have a paper license, seeing you can buy one online. Um, so if you buy one online, make sure you save it as a picture on your phone or a PDF or something, and you can just show it to them on your phone. Um, in other states, you need a paper license, but in mass, it's fine to just have it on your phone and show it to them on your phone. Um, so you don't have to worry about carrying the paper around, so that's pretty convenient. All right, so in Massachusetts, you're allowed to have two lines in the water per angler at one time. Um, that's open water fishing. So you can have two poles in the water at one time with one hook each. So a hook is considered like any lure. Um, so if you have like a crankbait or something like that that has a couple treble hooks on it, you're fine. That's legal. Um, what they don't want is you having a hook and then a leader coming off that with another hook, with a leader coming off that with another hook. That's the kind of stuff they don't want to see. Um, but if you're using a lure that has multiple hooks on it, that's considered legal. Um, so two lines in the water at one time, they say one hook, but by hook, they just mean one lure or like a single hook or a treble hook. Um, when ice fishing, you can have five lines in the water at one time. Uh, same regulations apply, one hook or one treble hook or one lure like a crankbait or a jig that has a treble hook on it or something like that or a couple treble hooks um and that when you're ice fishing it's any combination of jig sticks and tip ups so you can have five um again open water fishing is two um and ice fishing is five so make sure you keep that in mind if you're caught with more than that um you're probably going to get a fine and you could get your license suspended so make sure you're adhering to those regulations as well that's super important when it comes to hooks and weights and swivels and things like that you need to make sure that none of your stuff is lead 
Um, lead is poisonous to fish and other wildlife like ducks and geese, um, muskrats, things like that that might be in the water that could possibly ingest some lead if you lose a sinker or something in the water. So make sure you do not have lead. You can use tungsten, you can use tin, um, steel, whatever um, is out there other than lead. Um, it's like I said, it's poisonous and it can really impact uh, body of water in a negative way. So make sure you're not using any lead based um, hooks, jigs, sinkers, anything like that. Um, keep it all tungsten if you can. Um, tungsten's a great alternative. You also want to make sure that the bait you're using is legal. If you go to mass.gov and search fishing regulations, there's a whole list on there of legal bait. Um, your bait shops around here that sell shiners and minnows, um, they technically can only sell you legal bait. So if you're going there, you're pretty good. Um, they will know exactly what's legal and what you can use. Um, you can't go to a pet store and buy goldfish or anything like that and use that as bait. That's definitely illegal. Um, worms, things like that. You can go in your backyard, dig up worms. That's perfectly legal to do. Um, you can't like catch um, like a perch or a sunfish or something like that and use that as bait. Um, that's frowned upon. They want to make sure you're using shiners and other um, bait fish like that. Um, so keep that in mind as well. You want to make sure that the bait that you're using is legal. All right. So when it comes to different fish, there are different size limits as far as what you can keep. And there are also bag limits. So a bag limit is just how many fish you're legally allowed to keep. Um, if you're doing catch and release, you can catch as many fish as you want and put them back in the water. Um, if you're going to keep fish, if you enjoy taking it home, filleting it and eating it, um, then you have to make sure you're adhering to size and bag limits. Um, so with every fish, it's a different size and different limit. Um, so I'll go over those with you right now. So for trout, that includes rainbow trout. Brown trout. And brook trout. You're allowed three. Um, that doesn't mean three of each. That means any combination of three of those. So you can catch two brown trout and one brook trout. You can catch one of each. Um, you can catch three rainbow trout. Um, any combination of three of those trout and that's your limit for the day per person. Um, and there's no size limit. Um, you might wanna be judicial about what size you're keeping. You don't want to keep them too small because you want those fish to grow and get a little bit bigger. Um, and sometimes I'll put back bigger fish to let them get bigger, maybe trophy size, um, which are fun to catch. So I think a good average for a trout is probably around 14 or 15 inches to keep. Um, and anything smaller than like 10 inches is probably not worth keeping. Um, there's not a lot of meat on them and like I said you want them to grow and get bigger. Um, so again most of your rivers, your major rivers, um, your lakes and ponds with trout in them you have a three trout limit per angler per day and there's no size limit so make sure you're cognizant of that. Um, there are smaller rivers and things like that where the regulations are specific. So um, before you go out fishing on a river or something, go to mass.gov and look up the trout regulations and make sure for the river you're on, um, you know what the regulations are.
There's a couple bodies of water in Massachusetts that have lake trout in them. One of them is the Wachusett Reservoir. That's out in the West Boylston area. There's lots of access with trails and things like that. Um, you can only shore fish. You can't put a boat in there. Um, but people love to fish there. It's easy access. And fishing for lake trout can be fun. Um, so your limit on lake trout and Wachusett is three per angler per day. And there's no size limit on lake trout in the Wachusett. Um, so, like I said, usually you want to keep things around 14 inches or bigger. Um, so be kind of judicious about that on your own. Um, the other body of water that has lake trout in it in mass is the Quabbin Reservoir out past Athol Orange area. Um, their bag limit is two trout per day per angler and the size limit is 18 inches so anything 18 or over you can keep anything 18 and under you have to throw back um, and you're allowed to so make sure you're aware of that um, Wachusett and Quabbin also have salmon in there Quabbin you can access with a boat. You can go there and you can rent them. Um, and Wachusett, like I said, also has salmon. There might be a few bodies of water here and there that also have salmon, but they're hard to find. Um, the state used to stock them, but that was probably 25 years ago they stopped stocking them. Um, so there are some populations, but they're more readily found in Wachusett and Quabbin reservoirs. Your limit on salmon is two fish per angler per day, um, and they have to be 15 inches or bigger in order to keep. Um, the next fish we're going to look at is pickerel. Um, those are pretty common in most lakes and ponds around here. Um, if you want to keep them to eat them, um, they taste fine. There's just a lot of bones in them, so they could be time consuming. Um, but your limit on those is five pickerel per angler per day, and it has to be 15 inches or bigger in order to keep. Um, bass, that's largemouth and smallmouth bass. Your limit on those is five fish per angler per day and they have to be 12 inches or bigger um, in order to keep those. Some people like the taste of them um, so they're pretty popular fish to hang on to and eat. Um, pike and muskie. If you're fishing for them, there's very specific bodies of water for them. Uh, Lake Quinsigamon out in the Worcester area, Indian Lake in the Worcester area, and out in East Brookfield, Quaybog Pond. Um, you can find them out there. Um, they're good to eat. Again, very bony, so they're time consuming uh, to fillet up, but they are very tasty. You're allowed one of those per day per angler and has to be 28 inches or bigger. Um, those fish can get very big, so 28 inches might seem like it's a tough thing to get to, but pike and muskie come big. So 28 inches, um, it's a good size fish, um, but they're fun to catch. Walleye. If you can find them in mass, um, they're good eating, they're very sweet meat, um, almost like a cod or um, a haddock for saltwater fish. Um, it's a white fish, it's very sweet. Um, you're allowed five of those per angler per day and they have to be 14 inches or bigger. Any other fish that you can find, um, that includes sunfish, um, crappie, yellow and white perch, um, 
any of smelt any of those fish that you hook up on um, rock bass Any of those fish, there's no bag limit. You can take as many as you want, um, and there's no size limit either. Um, again, just be judicious. Um, only take what you need. Um, don't take more than you think you're going to eat. Um, but again, all other fish, no bag limit, no size limit. Also, there's a saying that we have in hunting, fishing, hiking, camping. Um, bring out what you bring in. Um, that just means if you bring trash in with you, like candy bar wrappers or granola bars, whatever it might be, soda, water, make sure you're taking that back out with you. And if there's a place to throw it out where you're fishing or hiking, camping, whatever, throw it out. Um, don't leave it in the woods. Don't leave it on the shore. Um, don't leave it at your campsite. It's just a good rule of thumb. Littering is a crime, but it's also just respectful and consider it for other people who are going to be using that same area um, so again take out what you take in all right so hopefully this was helpful to you guys um, now you know what the laws and regulations are um, the basic ones anyway if you have any other specific um, questions about laws and regulations you can go to mass.gov and look for fishing regulations you can call the um, wildlife management office um, or put your questions down below in the comments section and I'll do my best to answer them. Um, I'll do another video soon of how to fillet, prepare, and cook some panfish um, and maybe some trout if I can catch some trout. So I'll show you guys how to take them home, fillet them up, and cook them. Um, so hopefully that'll be coming in the next couple of weeks. So look forward to that. Like, share, subscribe to the channel, let people know about it. Um, if you have any questions about anything or if there's any other future videos that you want to see, leave it in the comments section. And until I see you guys again, be safe, be healthy, and be kind to one another.